We are back on the Sports Mag Zone. Rules have been drafted, new ones, to govern the recruitment of players by football clubs in the United Kingdom in the post-Brexit environment. The new rules were agreed following a meeting involving the English Football Association, Premier League and English Football League. Under the rules, effective December the 31st, 2020, players from a European Union country must gain a governing body endorsement or a GBE in order to sign for a club in the United Kingdom. UK clubs will also be restricted to signing a maximum of six foreign players per season. The rules also dictate that UK clubs will be barred from signing foreign players under the age of 18. Chief Executive of the Premier League, Richard Masters, said this about the new rules. Here's what he said. The Premier League has worked with the FA to come on to an agreement to ensure that no part of Brexit should damage the success of the Premier League or the prospects of the England teams. Continuing to be able to recruit the best players will see the Premier League remain competitive and compelling and the solutions will complement our player development philosophy of the best foreign talent alongside the best homegrown talent. Now joining us to give more perspective on this developing story is Faisal Khan. Faisal is a former FIFA licensed player agent who now works as a head scout for Malta, Guyana and Montserrat national teams. Faisal, welcome to the Sports Mag Zone. Great to have you on the show. Let me, let me, let me start here. I'm getting the feeling from uh, Richard Masters from the, the EPL that he stood up firmly against the weight of the push from the English FA to get certain things done with this new arrangement. Um, is that how you see it and how successful was he? Well, Lance, look, firstly, thank you very much for having me on. Uh, look, let's go straight to the point, you know. Uh, the EU were flooding players into the British system, you know. Anybody that has played the game or been around the game in the UK, um, you know, I, I, had a, I had a good conversation with uh, my Caribbean football brother, Brent Sancho, specifically about this. Um, you know, from under-17s all the way up, it's EU players, EU players, EU players. How Caribbean players going to get a chance, you know? So, um, for me, you know, um, like everything, there's going to be some pros and cons to it. But, you know, putting on my head of recruitment for the Guyana national team right now, it's great to see CONCACAF under-17, under-20 and Olympic Games carrying uh, Gravitas to get Caribbean players an opportunity to sign pro. Yeah, but the new rules also have something governing the signing up of players under the age of 18. I know for the most part, a lot of Caribbean players who get an opportunity in England are not under 18. So are you suggesting that that, that restriction doesn't by itself um, hamstring uh, the, the, the West Indies, the Caribbean effort as far as our young talent is concerned? Well, look, I mean, it's, it's, it's a very good point. I think, you know, anybody that, you know, has been involved in, in, in sports knows that, you know, we've got, you know, child protection is a very important topic, you know. So when we're moving young people around the world, you know, let's be frank, it's not just about what happens on the field. It, it's their life and their environment off the field as well, right? So um, for me, it's a good thing. For me, it's a good thing. Yeah. Ar Ar Faisal, as you mentioned, uh, first of all, congratulations on the, on the upturn in the Guyana uh, national team's performances internationally. I recognize that your work with the Guyana national team is, is a huge part of that. But from, a, from, a, from an English standpoint, how are the fans taking, taking this? Because there's no doubt that non-English players have played a huge part of the the upgrading of quality of the English Premier League. So how is the average fan in England taking this new direction? Yeah, man, well, look, it's, again, you know, brilliant, brilliant point there. Uh, listen, you can't have your cake and eat it. The, the majority of the people in England voted for Brexit. So these are the, you know, you can't have your cake and eat it. So this is, this is the, you know, this is the result of it. You know, if we want to be autonomous and, 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 and govern ourselves and to be frank, you know, I think the UK were very restricted as to being able to put laws into their sports because they have to comply to EU law. Now, to be very frank, anybody foreign outside of the UK will be treated the same. It's a point system. I'm glad you brought up the GBE. It's no different. A cousin of mine, he actually used to play football. He was at Wimbledon back in the day. He applied to go and live in Australia back in the day. And, you know, they have a point system for, the, for, their, for their work permit. So um, for me, it's a good thing. It's a good thing for Caribbean. 
So Faisal, all this, all this work now, consider the fact that there are restrictions as to the amount of players that one club can sign within a year, six players. Now we know that the EPL and, and even the, 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 the championship, I mean, that's gotten so popular, I mean, around the world and so on, because so many exciting players are in there. With these restrictions now, it means that a lot of the English Base players now will have to step up now and start representing these clubs because a lot of these players will no longer be in England because of the restriction. Wouldn't that be um, affecting the quality and excitement and the popularity of, for example, the English Football League, the English Premier League? Yeah, yeah look, I mean, you know, the, the, you know, there's pros and cons, of course. Um, I want to use Jaden Sancho as an example. And by the way, Trinidad have been trying to claim Jaden for a long time. Jaden's family are Guyanese, <laughs> right? But I'm, using, I'm using, I know his father very well. I know Sean very well. I'm using Jaden as a good example. Jaden had to go outside of the UK to get his first team uh, football, you know? So in some ways, it's, you know, I'm an Arsenal fan, but look at what Frank Lampard did last season. He was forced to use young players at Chelsea and look at the result, right? So there's a lot of very talented players in the English setup who are English that for me deserve to be playing first team football that, you know, are probably not because a manager comes in and what's the first thing he wants? He wants to sign a 50 million pound striker or midfielder or centre back. So now I think, you know, it's going to force head coaches to, to shuffle the pack. So and all this, young... okay, sorry, all will this affect, for example, a number of our players are playing in the lower leagues in England. Or will this new introduction of, of the new change in the rules now will affect our guys playing in the sec first or the second division or even the championships now, considering the limitations as to the amount of players that will be vying for these spots? Sure, fair, yeah, good, good question. Look, and, 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 and please forgive me, these, these rules only came out a few days ago, right? So I'm not a lawyer. I want to make that very clear. So it's only my interpretation, reading the laws as they've come through. What they've basically said is anybody outside of the UK is treated the same. It goes for Caribbean, it goes for Africa, it goes for South America, USA. They've categorized the leagues uh, and they're basically saying now where the old system was very, very chained on your national team and your national team's FIFA ranking. Now they've made it a lot more individual. So if we have a good youngster and he's playing, you know, second division Denmark or, 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 or first division Finland, right? Um, now they're going to be able to get the point system and look at how many international caps he's had. How often is he playing for his club? How far has his club gone in international uh, uh, co uh, competitive competitions, European competitions, for instance? And once they hit that 15-point mark, they can, get a, they can get a work permit. Yeah, but what, okay, put, sorry yeah. to interject because we're running out of time. But what about, for example, Jamaica being a part of the Commonwealth? Since that they have pulled away from Europe now. Why, have, why not the Commonwealth nations or countries start pressuring England to, to get some kind of waiver to get into their system now? Well, I'm glad you brought that point up because that was actually going to be my last point. So, you know, growing up in the UK to Guyanese parents and seeing the likes of uh, Ricardo Gardner and Dwight and Kenwin and all those guys go over, they went over back, on the, back in the day on a Commonwealth working man's visa. Right. If you're from the Commonwealth, you can go to the UK once you once you have employment. So I'm calling for the Caribbean to unite together and we say, look, we want this Commonwealth working man's reason to come back because indeed the Commonwealth should be getting, you know, more of a chance. If you look at the Dutch speaking um, uh, Caribbean and the French speaking Caribbean, they get they get a little blight when it comes to getting into France and Holland. So why can't the English speaking Caribbean countries do the same? Faisal, great talking to you here on the Sports Mat Zone. We look forward to having some more discussions with you. And I did praise you about your influence on the Guyana setup, but I should also talk about Montserrat because to see Montserrat beating St. Lucia in international football and playing El Salvador and being competitive, losing by only one goal to nil, uh, those are results that we have never seen uh, for Montserrat um, for decades on end. So congratulations, sir, and keep up the good work. Thank you, guys. All the best. Yeah. And, and George, as someone who follows football globally and in Europe specifically, these new rules seem to be rules that a lot of fans will have a lot to say about. Because as we just established there in the discussion with Faisal, um, uh, the, the influx of, uh, of non-English players in the English system England now is seeing that as stifling the growth and development of some of their own. But on the other side of the coin, as I said to Faisal, English football is as good as it is now, largely because of the foreign influence in the game there. 
Absolutely so. And even beyond the, the discomfort of the fans with the new rules, gentlemen, the glaring thing for me is this. There are some huge football clubs in the UK whose business model was built on being able to recruit the best young talent from wherever in the world they are, which will now be seriously affected. And I'm talking too specifically. Manchester City is more than just Manchester City Football Club. Right. They have clubs in the MLS. They have clubs all around Europe. So it's a, it's a group of about six to eight clubs now. And that business model eight of the successful Chelsea formula, which I'll come to quickly, that Manchester City formula is predicated on buying youngsters 14, 13, 15, putting them into feeder club in far-flung part of the world, bringing that player to maturity, putting a market value on that player, either fast-tracking that player into the Manchester City first team or the Chelsea first team, or the player is not of the standard required by the Man City or Chelsea manager at the time, at the point in time, selling that player on to another club at huge profit. That business model will be severely affected by these rules because even though you're not buying the player to play for the team, Man City or Chelsea, in the UK, it is still Man City buying the player. Man City is domiciled and registered as a UK football club. So that will have serious implications for that aspect of the business. You're talking about millions, potentially billions of dollars at risk from the change ushered in by the footballing stakeholders in the UK. It's, it's, it's going to be a nightmare for the likes of the Man City owners from Qatar and Roman Abramovich, the man bankrolling Chelsea. Their business model was built not on these changes, but for the status quo to continue to exist. The status quo changed, they're going to lose money. And if businessmen lose money, you know how that goes. Does Arsenal has the same the business model as well, George? Because it is known no, that I'm, Arsenal Venk on them, they, they, they have recruited so many youngsters and prepared them and they have sold so many players. Well, not, not with the club the Arsenal ownership is slightly yeah. different because even though they are owned by foreigners, the business model does not involve a network of clubs as both Manchester City and the, 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 the blueprint creators Chelsea have. So it's slightly different. But it's, you asked a good question, Wayne, about whether or not players from the Commonwealth, parts of the world where we're part of the world where we are from, if they'd get uh, preferential treatment. The reason they wouldn't get preferential treatment is because of uh, a, a term that both of you and gentlemen know very well, the free market. The English cl the clubs are going to say, well, no, this is capitalism. Let us, let us take the players from wherever in the world we can get them. We don't want you to earmark any part of the world and say, okay, we are obliged to take first from here before we go anywhere else. Let the free market take care of itself. Let the levers of capitalism uh, be allowed to, 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 to function without hindrance and let us get the business going. So it's a good concept. It would be good if they did that because we all benefit. But I'm saying that the money men who bankroll these clubs would not go for that. I wasn't suggesting that they would be first choice in the charge. I was just suggesting that maybe these countries should be able to get their players in there for the simple reason. And some of the waivers but, could be granted to them because they are part of the Commonwealth. It should you. mean I'm something. Supporting you. I'm supporting I'm supporting you and saying that it, that would be what I would want, but I'm telling you why the businessmen wouldn't allow for that to happen, because of free market. So even if it's not first choice, the fact that you put in preferential options in it, that would be that would not be supported by the businessmen who invested billions into their businesses, even though that would suit the, Car the, the Caribbean no end to have a preferential access given to players from this part of the world. Yeah, so George, having said what you, you are saying now, do you suspect that Richard Masters of the EPL got what he wanted out of these negotiations or there was enough pushback uh, that left him a little bit short of what ideally he would have wanted for EPL clubs? That, 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 that's a very interesting question, Lance, because here's the thing now. A part of the Brexit debate that has happened, which I have watched so very closely, perhaps too much of it, uh, wasting time watching that over the, over the past few years, there have been some government interests that are the leading lights in the UK who want to weaken the influence of the men like Roman Abramovich, like the Qatar family who owns Manchester City. They don't want foreigners owning so many assets and so valuable assets for UK companies. So they would be very happy at this because you, you, you can see this down the line as almost a weakening of the position of those owners of those clubs because what the argument is from those who oppose these business structures is that the competition, the, 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 the playing field is unfair and the community club, the Wickham Wanderers, the Wimbledon, the AFC Wimbledon, you name the small club, these clubs are being crowded out because of the behemoths that they are competing against and the fact that Manchester United 
United, which is a revenue generating monster. Arsenal, which is a revenue generating monster, and Liverpool and the others are following suit to have to keep pace with the the, 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 the pace being set by the Man Citys and Chelsea's of this world. And that creates big fish in an increasingly smaller pond and no small fish in the pond. So there are many politicians in Britain and many influential stakeholders who will be applauding what happened today. And they would see this, this outturn as a result of the machinations which were part of the Brexit process, which led to the UK voting to leave the EU, then leaving the EU, and now thrashing out the details of that departure by the end of the year so this will be celebrated by many so to answer your question masters yeah, yeah. would perhaps not be masters would perhaps not be exceedingly happy but based on who he has supp the support of lands there are many politicians who support him who'll be happy with how things have turned out in this regard so what about some of the consequences of this now George? i heard what you just said but did, i mean these business models they have brought in millions as you say maybe billions of dollars into the communities and of course into the coffers of, 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 of Great Britain. So what's gonna happen now that these restrictions are in place? Well, here's the thing, Wayne. It's a good premise you've got, and again, you're informed today. The, Always, the John, you're, you're listening from, for the first time. You're, you're the, paying the attention. The contention from the businessmen, the contention from the politicians is that if these football clubs and the millions they generate if the bulk of it was being reinvested in the country and in the communities and into grassroots football and sport, no problem. But they're saying all that is happening is that Roman Abramovich is getting richer to buy more super yachts. The Qatari family, they have money like sand on the, 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 on the beach. They are getting more money and they're not plowing enough of, their, of, of, of the revenue back into the English system, the English game. So that is why the opposition to them is so strong. So they are not shedding any tears for them because they're saying, why should the rich be even richer and crowd out those who can create wealth for others at other levels of the footballing pyramid. Yeah, still a lot more football discussion to come on the Sports Max Zone because we do have uh, the English Premier League and La Liga look, to look back at a defeat again for Barcelona, Tottenham and Liverpool still top of the English Premier League. On Sports Max this week, the India A team against Australia A, the first and second test matches live Monday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. You'll see the action on Sports Max. You have a Champions League football, of course, Tuesday on and Wednesday, both on Sports Max and Sports Max 2. The Lanka Premier League continues Wednesday with matches also Thursday, Friday and Sunday. Day on Sports Max. Uh, the UEFA Europa League is on Thursday on Sports Max and Sports Max 2. For the rugby fans, the Heineken Champions Cup live Friday, Saturday, Sunday on both Sports Max and Sports Max 2. EFL Championship Football live on Saturday on Sports Max and Sports Max 2. And of course, lovely La Liga football Friday, Saturday, Sunday, both Sports Max and Sports Max 2 having action.